So welcome to our final week for this masterclass. I'm here again in Freshwater Bay. Uh, it's a beautiful day and um, we're going to start this segment all about the more specialist and unique parts of filmmaking that I love. I have an underwater housing and I want to jump in the water in a minute. But for the first part, I wanted to get a subject involved, uh, a bit of interest involved for this video. And I've decided that paddleboarder or paddleboarding sequence would really add to this idea that come to the island and do some active adventure sports. Sam's going to be my model and I'm basically going to set up a sequence of him pumping up the paddleboard and setting out to go. This might be quite a mundane thing to shoot, but actually it's a great establisher. It's a great kind of build up to the main event, which is the actual paddleboarding. So I'm going to get Sam into position. Whilst I'm filming, I'm also going to be directing him. This is part of my job that I do often, where I'm kind of like filling all the roles of someone on set. I could be the producer, the filmer, the editor, like all sorts, who knows? So I'm going to direct Sam as I go. Uh, we're going to get a variety of different angles, all our close-ups, our medium shots, even wide shots. Uh, and then we're going to get into the water. So we've selected this tiny bit of beach because it has a really nice backdrop. Um, we're next to the ocean, that's where you would start paddleboarding. And I've decided that I'm actually going to shoot this whole sequence on a 50mm prime. Sometimes you might want to opt for uh, a zoom, but I want to stick to the 50. I want to see what I can get. You can still get your wides close and medium close ups with a 50 mil and it'll be a little bit challenged but I want to show you guys uh, what you can basically achieve with just one lens. The first starting point and tip that I want to share with you guys about working with a model, a subject or a talent or anyone um, is basically make sure they know what's going on. This whole video so far I haven't really had anyone that I can communicate with. Can't really talk to seagulls or beaches so this is the first time we've got a character in the film and Sam has an idea about filmmaking already, so he understands what goes into it. But a lot of people you might work with might have never seen a camera before or been in front of the camera. So the easiest thing for you to do is to tell them what you want and be very clear and direct about it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pretty much tell Sam exactly what I want him to do without him doing it. I'm gonna tell him what I intend to get from that and then we're gonna go through and do it. What I want you to do is pretty much walk into this frame, stand for a second, look out to the stacks, put the bag down. Yeah. I'm gonna show you exactly where I wanna walk because I'm gonna put a stone where I want you to stop walking, okay? So I'm gonna go and put a stone down on the floor right now. So I'm starting with a wide angle shot in order to basically establish where we are and that Sam is a human that has legs and it's not just his hand to start with and pretty much that will open up the sequence. He's got a paddle on his back and people will start realizing that. Okay, Sam, you can come back pretty much to the steps and then walk into the shot. And then when you get there, look around and put the bag down. And then they're gonna come in and get a close up of the bag hitting the floor. So just remember which hands you use, okay? So I basically have asked Sam to keep continuity checking. When I come and do a close up, I'm going to want him to use the same hand to put the bag down. This is just little tips for him to help me and me to help him in terms of just if we have to repeat things or if I get something wrong continuity wise and we have to reshoot, it's just a bit of a mess. So continuity is something you always need to think about when you're filming. I'm filming everything at the moment in uh, 50 frames per second. Uh, this is my preferred sort of frame rate for anything that is going to be atmospheric and cinematic. I've done this pretty much so in the edit I have a little bit of choice to choose sort of uh, real time or a bit of slow motion and I think it will just really add to like the feeling of the video so that's why I chose it. Cool. So for that shot I wanted to get a close up so in the edit I could cut from the wide of him putting the bag down and as the bag is falling I cut to the close up and then we see the close up. That will focus the attention of the viewer on what they're meant to be looking at, which is the paddleboard. Um, we're then going to move on to the next one where I kind of want to get a second establisher shot. And this might be a little bit weird for some viewers, but I'm actually going to focus right on the rocks behind Sam. Sam's going to be out focused and this is going to be him unzipping it. I don't want to see him actually unzip it, but I want him to look like he's applying the unzip of the bag. And actually we're going to be focusing on the beautiful landscape behind. So we'll do that now. Okay, you can zip and unzip a couple of times for me. I'm going to incorporate a little bit of movement here 
and I'm like I said before just going to move from hip to hip okay and seeing as I'm here I'm going to give myself or the editor a few options in post-production and I'm pretty much going to now just focus on his hand and this way I'm going to try and follow the movement of his hand so I'm going to go with it like this and then if he keeps on doing it one will be sharp one will be perfect and one will work really well and that's pretty much all I need for that shot So I've just collected a load of different B-roll shots in sequence in which I can already see working really well for my edits. Um, I've probably shot a little bit more than I need, but at least I have the kind of luxury of choosing in the edit later. Sam has pretty much set up the whole paddleboard. He's gonna go and quickly get ready. He's uh, paddleboarding in his shorts today because it's quite a warm day. Um, once that's ready, um, the last kind of shot that I wanna get is him entering the water. So I've told Sam uh, about the final shot, the final on land shot that I need. We call them dry shots and the wet shots are the ones with the housing. So I've, I've prepped him what I want. This whole time I've been really communicative with him. Like he needs to know what I need, what I want and the process has been really smooth. So I'm gonna give him uh, a couple of minutes. He's gonna jump straight into the water and then with anything, paddleboarding is a not extreme sport. It is a sport. It's also high risk being near water. Uh, it's important that I can still understand what his capabilities are on the board and what I am. I know Sam like really, really well. I know that he's a really strong paddleboarder, but it's really important when you're selecting your talent or your models that they really know how to work with water. You need to make sure that they're really comfortable, keep chatting to them, asking questions, make sure that they feel like they can do what you're asking them to do. This is something that models will really appreciate. It will look very professional in front of your clients and it will make the whole shoot go really, really smooth. So, I often and usually would like to shoot at optimal hour, light hours of the day, so sunrise or sunset. However, this wouldn't make too much sense for our story. Most people paddleboard when it's hot and it's sunny and there's a lot of light, it's safer. And actually for my underwater housing, and which I'll tell you about later, um, it's pretty much the best conditions to have really harsh light for underwater like clarity. So for this, the light is really harsh. You need to work with that. You need to make sand still look flattering, not too washed out. So you could backlight him or you could stand and try and shield the, the light with some sort of filter or um, diffuser or something like that. I'm actually going to use the paddle board to like basically move a little bit of light away from him. So I'm going to ask Sam pretty much to lift the board up to about waist height. That's going to allow just a little bit of light on his, on his toes. I'm focusing on the toes so hopefully I could create a bit more of a softer look by doing that. As you can see here like the paddleboard is actually making a shadow over one of his feet. That's quite interesting, adds a bit of contrast. So I'm actually going to keep that. I might ask him to tilt it slightly. He actually already did, did that exactly as I told him to. So you almost have like this kind of angle. So I'm basically now going to get into position. I'm going to wait for a few waves to go by. And just like what we did before, Sam unzipping and unzipping and you know, keep doing that. I'm going to just wait for the waves to come in and out and just quickly like just go over his feet until there's one I'm happy with. So I've just finished up shooting what I would call is the start of the story with the sequence with Sam. I'll then shoot a few things of him coming into the water, potentially use a drone and then we're going to go straight in with the underwater housing. Shooting a story is all about creating a sequence and allowing the audience to really understand the kind of story and message you're kind of trying to capture. It would not make a sense for me to basically film Sam unzipping the paddleboard and then suddenly he's on a paddleboard. I needed to show the audience that there was a story there. It was Sam's story. He came to the beach, he pumped up the paddleboard and then he went off. And that will allow the audience to know the progression of the story. But using a variety of different shot angles and uh, focal lengths and basically adding all these sweeteners into it just makes your production look a little bit more premium. It makes it more interesting. It'll make people want to basically watch it. So we're now going to move on. We're going to go to a different part of the beach. 
Uh, like I just said, I know this beach really well, so I know where the best place is to film. In the corner behind me, the water clarity becomes very, very vivid. And during harsh light conditions like this, it's crystal clear for underwater filming. Here is a little bit more uh, seaweedy and rocky, and unfortunately we have a bit of sewage in this area. So in the corner, it's a lot better. And I'm basically gonna get Sam to paddle over there. He doesn't need to walk the paddle board. He'll paddle, I'll meet him there, and I'm gonna suit some boots, and we're gonna get into the water. So we've just walked along the beach to where the water clarity is a lot better. Here I have pretty much my whole sort of like setup for underwater filming. Uh, apart from the camera, this is all the kind of like practical stuff within this bag. Before I dive straight into there, I want to go over a few like logistical preparations that need to happen before you even consider going into the water. Firstly, I have a series of different apps on my phone and resources online which can help me pretty much understand what's going on on the beach without even coming to the beach. And it's really important, especially in the UK, to check the tides. We are a tidal island, the Isle of Wight is completely tidal. That will really dictate the water conditions, but also how safe it's going to be and how much time you have in the water. At the moment at Freshwater, um, the tide is high. And that's great for this particular area because you have a small reef and a little bit of like UK looking coral down here and, and it is really beautiful. Low tide means the light will get to it a little bit more and it'll be easier to shoot. Another tip is that whatever you do and however long you spend in the water, you need to make sure someone knows your intentions in the water. I always let someone know that I'm going swimming. I always let someone know how long I'm gonna be and when to, they should expect to see me back. We are all completely at the mercy of mother nature and the ocean is no joke at all. It's dangerous, you don't know what she's gonna do and you could be a huge extreme like seasoned veteran in the water, but all these tips and safety measures apply to anyone regardless of the experience. I love the water, I understand it, I, I feel comfortable in there, but there could be some sort of freak storm surge, there could be uh, a, some sort of, there could be anything going on that I maybe don't know about or haven't experienced before, and that becomes dangerous. Dangerous to your life, but also the people that will have to come out and save you. So obviously we have, first off, the underwater housing. You don't want to forget that. I also have a two-handled grip, which basically goes onto the bottom of the housing. This I put on for when I'm doing video work in the water. It's pretty much the same thing that applies to holding a camera without a gimbal or without a shoulder rig. This takes my hands away from the camera. The camera's still on a shell, stabilization is there, but this helps me basically, again, to open up my shoulders, allow myself to not touch the camera so much to create a lot more smooth movements. So I'm gonna start by talking about the underwater housing care, because there's things in this bag that relate completely to that. I always carry around two towels. So one towel for me, one towel for the housing. As soon as you get it out the water, you wanna basically get as much fresh water as possible straight on it. Much of this design is uh, anti-rust, but it will rust over time and you need to protect that. These aren't cheap bits of equipment. So I always basically carry a water bottle full of fresh water. As soon as I get out the water, that gets put all over the housing and then I wrap it in a towel. And when I get home, I repeat that process. I might even submerge it in a bucket of water for 24 hours. So in here, I have my wetsuit. Today, um, I'm feeling comfortable enough to go swimming without my wetsuit. Um, it's, I'm not gonna be in there for too long. It's not too cold and I'm quite experienced doing that. I would recommend people using a wetsuit, especially in the winter that might be over five mil in thickness. This is five mil, um, it's brilliant for underwater. It's extremely thick and you have uh, shin pads and arm pads to basically protect you from anything that might, you might hit in the water. As well as a wetsuit, you can also uh, be wearing gloves. Uh, your fingers are probably the first thing that gets really cold uh, when you're in the water. That will just help you. I also really like these because it allows me to have a lot more grip onto my housing. So wearing these and they have like little sort of uh, rubber bits, that helps me make sure I don't drop this. I also have um, fins 
These are short fins, great for traveling. Uh, I'm not gonna do too much deep diving. They'll keep me buoyant, they'll keep me still. The video will look better if I'm steadier. So this helps me keep above the water. I also like conserve energy by not having to tread water so much with them. So that really helps in terms of, um, you know, just keeping in the water quicker. So these are all things that help me. There is a huge amount of other stuff that you might want to use yourself. Having extra water, having um, maybe longer fins, stuff like that. This is kind of my base for shooting in a location like this. So now let's set up the actual camera. With any bit of new equipment or equipment like this, it's really important to understand how it works. And I would definitely suggest to do that before you go anywhere near water. Um, these aren't a joke. Um, if you get water in here, uh, you're gonna damage your camera. And um, you don't wanna faff around in the water. I always do my settings and exposure and other little things like that before I actually enter the water. Um, luckily with this one, I can change anything I want, but you don't really want to be doing that in the water. It's better to do it now and then feel confident that you can kind of just get on with the shoot whilst you're in there. You should always make sure that you're not spending too much time in the water. It's best to review your footage when you come out and pretty much just have fun because most of the time, and a lot of people will hate me saying this, but I'm just winging it when I'm in there. It's so hard to see what you're filming. It's really hard to change settings. And there's a lot going on, a lot of movement. So you're kind of like hoping for the best when you're in there. It's like film photography. You shoot a load of pictures. You don't see them for a while. This is the same kind of thing. You've got to like just hope for the best. But that's like kind of part of the reason why I love it. And it's really fun and it's a bit of a challenge. So I'm now going to take off my microphone. These aren't waterproof. Rode, sort that out. Um, I'm going to take it off, obviously can't talk to you guys in there, so I'll come back out and I'll look, have a little review of uh, what I've done in a minute. Right, so I just got out of the water. I'm pretty wet, but obviously just got out of the water. It's actually a really good temperature in there, which is perfect for filming. Um, I wanted to stay in for longer, but actually the conditions weren't amazing, um, especially not for paddle boarding. Uh, Sam struggled to get up on the paddle board, so it didn't work. But what I can show you is some work that we have got here before when it's clearer at sunrise. So here it is. When I'm in the water, everything is a bit of a compromise, including working out the exposure. Obviously a lot's going on in the water. The light is changing a lot. So I have to kind of work a balance between how I'm, gonna, how I'm basically gonna expose before I get in the water. And luckily with my housing, I can change the settings, but I really have to like kind of work out what's gonna work. I always have um, a high frame rate. So I shoot my video in slow motion in the water. Um, there's a lot of movement going on. So slowing things down is so helpful. But if you do want to speed things up, you get that kind of sporty look. So sometimes I do that too. I always want to take advantage of the fact I'm in the water. Sometimes it's rare, sometimes the conditions aren't, sometimes the conditions aren't perfect. So I'm actually often hybrid shooting. So I might take pictures when I'm under there and I might film as well. Because of this, my shutter speed is actually really, really high. And that's like breaking a rule of filmmaking. You're meant to basically, if your, shut, your frame rate is 100, your shutter speed needs to be 200. That's like the kind of rule. I often actually put my shutter speed like a lot higher because I know I want to switch quickly to a photograph. When things are moving in the water, especially like someone diving in or paddleboarding, your shutter speed needs to be really high. So I have to compromise a little bit, but it's been working out for me. So three tips for filmmaking. First tip, invest in a camera that you know is reliable for the type of filmmaking you want to do. For me, the Sony A7 Mark III and the A7 Mark IV is a winner, mostly because I'm a hybrid shooter. I love shooting photography and video. They're also brilliant with low lights and the lens choices are brilliant. So always invest in the right equipment for you. I said this in the course, but the best film is the one you make for yourself. You don't want to enter this industry not loving the type of work that you do. 
If you are passionate, that will come across in your film. If you love what you do, that will come across in your work. You need to experiment and find what you love in order to share the love, basically. The aim for me is to use my skills uh, and my creativity to share how beautiful this natural world is. If one person can look at a video that I've made and feel inspired to want to see the ocean or be in the ocean or protect it, then I've done my job. We have to remember that without the ocean and without the environments around us, we have no life. It's a beautiful thing and all I really want is other people to share this love for the environment. My main tip, if you're working on a beach, if you see some plastic, pick it up. Do not leave your plastic either. Make sure that you leave the beach and you left no trace. She'll thank you later. Thank you so much for watching my masterclass. I really hope you enjoyed it and I really hope you have any key takeaways from this. If you happen to feel inspired to pick up a camera and go out and shoot, let me know, let the WEX team know. Make sure you post them, share your pictures, your videos. And if you can, use the hashtag WEX how to. I really want to see them and I really hope you enjoyed it. So my name is Alice Greenfield. I'm shot by Alice on Instagram. I also have my own production company with my boyfriend Sam called Adrift Visuals. That's where you can see a lot of my outdoor work. And please check them all out. Thank you again for watching. Um, and I really hope that you're inspired to, to get out and grab a camera. Thank you.